Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we are doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 1, lesson 10. Okay, here is the design of the flag for Trinidad and Tobago. Describe a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections that take the lower left triangle to the upper right triangle. So to take this triangle and put it here, the real easy way to do this is find the center point and rotate 180 degrees. Okay, and what's next? Another flag. Here's a picture of an older version of the flag of Great Britain. There is a rigid transformation that takes triangle 1 to triangle 2, another that takes triangle 1 to triangle 3, and another that takes triangle 1 to triangle 4. Measure the lengths of the sides in triangles 1 and 2. Triangle 1 and triangle 2. What do you notice? Yeah, the ruler on here isn't great for that, but... We know there was a rigid transformation that took 1 to 2, which means whatever this length is has to be equal to this length. This side here has to be congruent to this side here. This side here has to be congruent to this side here. What do you notice? Oops. I didn't mean to say all sides, I meant to say all... What's the word I'm looking for? Corresponding. All corresponding sides are congruent. They have the same measurement. What are the side lengths of triangle three? They are the same as triangle 1 and 2 because there's a rigid transformation that takes this triangle and puts it here, puts it here, puts it here. They all have to be congruent to each other. Do all eight triangles in the flag have the same area? Well, 1, 2, 3, and 4 do because they're all congruent to each other because there was a transformation that took us from one to each of the others. However, the other four triangles on here are larger. Those are definitely going to have a larger area. Do all eight triangles have the same area? No way. How do you know? They're different sizes. You can tell that just by looking that these two triangles here are different. Okay, what question is next? Which of the lines in here is parallel to line L? Well, it's not P because P touches it in one place. If they cross in one place, they're definitely not parallel. How about M? M looks like it is not the same distance away all the way across. It's that far away right there. Uh-oh, that is not the same distance. M is going to touch. They're going to cross somewhere over in that direction. How about L and K? Because remember, parallel means they're the same distance away from each other all the time. Those are the same distance away from each other at each end. What line is parallel to L? K. Explain how to translate, rotate, or reflect line L to get line K. So we could translate line L this far. We could translate it 
from here to here. That would take line L and put it on K. How about a rotation? For a rotation, we just need a point equidistant from the two, the midpoint between these two. And if we rotate it 180 degrees, line L rotated 180 degrees around this point will become line K. How about a reflection? If we reflected it over the line in the middle between those two, then L would become K. So you can do that all three different ways. Explain how to translate, rotate, or reflect line L to get line P. So if we want to translate L to P, translations are just slides. No amount of sliding L around is going to put it where P is. If we want to rotate line L to be line P, we would rotate it around this point this many degrees, and that would put line L onto line P. How about a reflection? If we took the line that divided that in half, and if we rotated line or reflected line L over this line, it would put it right onto line P. So to turn L into P, we can rotate or reflect and get it, but we cannot translate. Point A has coordinates 3, 4. After a translation, four units left, a reflection across the x-axis, and a translation two units down, what are the coordinates of the image? So let's think about just where this would be. 3, 4, 3, 4, it's going to be about here. Translation four units left. Well, four units left is going to put it here, so it's going to be oops, four units left. That's going to be right there. Negative one. Reflection across the x-axis. This is the x-axis. Negative 1, 4 is going to reflect across the x-axis, be down here at negative 1, negative 4. Translate 2 units down. 2 units down, negative 1, negative 4 will become negative 1, negative 6. So that is where A prime should be after doing all that to it. Here's triangle XYZ. Draw these three rotations. Erase that stuff that we still had showing. Rotate XYZ 90 degrees around point Z. I'll do this one in black. So that's XYZ. We want to rotate 90 degrees clockwise. That's 90 degrees clockwise around point Z. Okay, now I'll do one in red. Rotate XYZ 180 degrees around Z. So there's my figure. I'm going to rotate it 90, 180 degrees, and we're going around point Z, which will put it right there. 270 degrees. Draw my figure again. Ninety, one eighty, two seventy around Z. 
Okay. So we rotated our figure three times. That's the last problem for today. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. See you next time.